Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're taking a look at the Curt Custom Fit Class 3 receiver hitch. We have a 2023 Chevrolet Equinox. So this hitch is a 2 inch by 2 inch. It's a Class 3 receiver. Uh, this has a black gloss uh, powder coat finish. Um, it's got the industry standard 5 8 inch pinhole uh, for these. This doesn't come with it. If we have these, we also have the locking ones here available at eTrailer. The safety chain loop on our Kurt hitch are a decent size. Uh, they will accept a, a large, heavier duty clevis type hook or the S hook style. So as far as weight ratings go on this hitch, this is a class three hitch. Uh, it has a 675 pound tongue weight rating, which is more than enough for some of these uh, four custom four bike carriers. Um, as far as towing goes, you're looking at 4,500 pound rating. Now you want to check with your vehicle's owner's manual and see which one is bigger. This hitch may be bigger than your vehicle can tow. So whichever one is lower, just go with that. As far as clearances, we have from the ground, we're going to measure up to the inside of the sleeve here. We're looking at 11 inches. And then if we measure from the inside of our pinhole here to the outer fascia of our bumper, we're looking at six inches. So keeping those measurements in mind, especially with the ground clearance here, uh, you're going to want to look for accessories that, uh, with a shank that has a rise to it. It's pretty low to the ground on this. Um, as far as the six inches with the bumper, uh, you'll be using that for anything that folds up. As far as installation on this hitch, uh, it was a fairly straightforward, easy install. There's nothing that you really have to cut. Um, and it weighs 42 pounds. You might want to grab a friend. Um, and if you have basic hand tools, uh, a torque wrench, uh, and maybe a deburring tool or file uh, just to open up some clearances under there, that's it. So if you want to see how we did it, we're about to take it inside. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up our fascia back here. Uh, it's held in place by two T15 bolts. What that's going to do is going to allow us to drop this exhaust down. It'll give us the clearance to get our exhaust around this. So let's go ahead and get these off right now. Okay, so we're ready to drop the exhaust. Uh, what we're gonna do uh, is use this cam buckle tie down strap. And if you locate your coil springs on the back up here, we can just link up right to these, come under your exhaust, go over to the other side, and then tighten that up. And that will allow us to bring this down in a controlled manner. So once we have the cam buckle strap holding the exhaust, we're going to start taking off the exhaust mounts. Now on the rear of the vehicle here, we've got two, one on each side. And this is a 15 millimeter uh, bolt that has to come out. These nuts don't come off. These are weld nuts. So you want to take the bolt out. That's one. That's two. Now, it's okay to just let this thing hang because the whole thing's gonna be coming down. And then we just repeat to the other side over here. With the back exhaust hangers uh, taken off, that's gonna lead us back to this one right behind the muffler. If you have trouble getting yours off, uh, you can always kind of soap these up, make it easier to get off and use a pry bar if you have to. I'm gonna take this exhaust hanger that we left on here and I'm gonna slide it forward here so it'll clear this fascia. Our next step is actually, we're gonna be dropping the exhaust. We're gonna clear the uh, rear bumper fascia right here. Um, so, by loosening this strap. And you may have to wiggle it around a little bit and pull down on your fascia. We're going to have our access points here. The hitch is actually going to install in this hole, this hole, and this hole. The hardware uh, that we get with the kit, the fish wire, this block, and the carriage bolt, all have to go through this hole. And as you can see, it's not going to fit right now. So we are going to take a deburring tool, and we're just going to round out this hole a little bit. It's not going to take much, but it's going to allow us to get the hardware up inside of here. Uh, if you don't have a deep burring tool, you can use a, uh, like a rat tail file or something like that. It's really not that much work just to open this up. We got it opened up enough and we're going to test fit these, make sure these things can slide up and we are good to go. Now, uh, we have bare metal here from when we were deburring, so uh, one of the things I like to do here is we're going to use some clear coat and we're going to spray that up just to keep rust and corrosion from forming. 
we're, while we're waiting for the paint to dry, this is the hardware you're going to get in the kit. You got the fish wire, you have the block, and you've got the uh, carriage bolt. So uh, we'll just go ahead and show you how they how they come. And I'm going to undo this here. Um, and the way this works, if you can figure out which way to take this apart, uh, is we're going to thread this through the block, and then thread the bolt on there. And then so the fish wire, as you feed it up through the frame. This is going to feed everything through and come out the hole. We're going to feed the wire up. We can start on this side with the shortest hole, and I like to bend the wire just so to be able to come back and come loop around. So we're going to put the coil side in. Just try not to block the camera here. So we're going to feed it like this, and then we take our block first and then thread the carriage bolt on. And we're going to feed the block up first and then the carriage bolt and then pull down on the fish wire and like magic it's in place. And again we're going to try to pre-bend this and kind of put it in an arc so hopefully it'll find its way to us. You can stick your finger up there and kind of feel it. So there we go. So same thing. Block first, then the carriage bolt. Thread the carriage bolt on. And then fish it through. Block first, then the carriage bolt. Fish it through. And then go ahead and repeat that for this hole. Uh, and then it's going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So the next step is actually to install the hitch and put it up over that. You're going to feed the fish wires through the two oval holes. One there, one there, and the round one in the front. And we're going to go up and over the exhaust bracket. Feed the wire down so it'll guide you up to the bolt. Okay. All right, so that happens sometimes. Fish wire jumped out. No big deal, we'll just put it right back down and feed it through. And right now, we only need one bolt secured. So we'll go ahead and thread on this flange nut to hold it up. So once these are all finger tight here, we're gonna go ahead and snug these up. This is a three quarter inch socket. And you're gonna tighten up all three on both sides. Once these are snugged up, we're going to go ahead and torque them to the values uh, that we saw in the directions. The next thing we got to do is put the exhaust back. So uh, it's the same thing that we did before. We're going to get these exhaust brackets up underneath this. Uh, these exhaust mounts actually have a little tab right here, and that'll help as you go up, you can hang it up there while you get the bolts to tighten them down. And that was it for our Curt receiver hitch on our 2023 Chevrolet Equinox.